All right. Um, I noticed that there is one thing last time, one point that we did not cover because it was actually at the very end. Um, there, oh, there are napkins right behind you, or if you in, in the couple that is facing us, uh, can you open that? that? No. Uh, yeah, yeah, no. But I, I was thinking of napkins, if you like. No, okay. Um, that is uh, to say a word on envy uh, and the importance of beyond envy related to psychosis, right? So I just want to see if any of you looked at that, right? Uh, and if you remember what particularly Blandon Liu says, Beyond says about them, the Something about creativity that attacks the thinking part of the mind. Empty out. Yeah, say that out loud so, so she can hear you. Yes, go ahead. That's, um, well, it um, attacks the thinking part of one's mind because it empties out one's own sense of goodness and attacks the object's creativity and, and um, yes. Right. Um, now, um, since we're going to talk in a while about factors and functions, right? Envy is a factor. If you're looking for an example, trying to imagine what is a factor different from a function, envy is a factor of the personality, among other factors, and it's a factor in the psychotic part of the personality, which makes the psychotic part of the personality psychotic. It's not part of the non-psychotic personality? Well, it is not. Not the envy that Bion is speaking about, because he's not speaking of envy as a sentiment, as a feeling. It's not the kind of thing you say, oh, I envy you. It's not oh, about okay. that. Okay. It's something much more disturbed and disturbing that is silent, that then silently carries on a deathly task, right? The task of, as you said, of scooping out the goodness of the object, of destroying the ability of the object to think. And since Bion's contention, as we're going to see in a moment, is that the baby needs the thinking mind of the mother <coughs> in order to be understood before it can understand itself, if the ability, if envy is a factor of the personality, then that will do something to the thinking mind of the mother. We're not talking of intellectual thinking. We are talking here of the kind of thinking that Bion calls reverie. The ability of the mother to imagine the baby, to try to imagine what is going on in the baby, with the baby, long before the baby can express anything or can be aware of anything, right? Or can express, but perhaps not in words? Certainly not in words. But can fully express it? Well, the baby certainly is expressive, but without understanding what he is expressing, right? If the baby um, uh, is uh, in pain, or is experiencing a fear of dying, for the baby this means ultimately that it is dying. It doesn't mean that it has a fear of dying, right? It becomes the experience of dying, not understood by the baby in any way, but if the mother has the ability to tune in with the baby, she will have the feeling she would experience that something very disturbing is happening to the baby and she will know intuitively mm -hmm. through her reverie, through her getting in touch with the baby's feelings, she will know what she needs to do in order to soothe the baby. Right? All mothers, oh, I would say healthy mothers do that intuitively. Mm -hmm. Winnicott spoke of that 
<clears throat> as the good enough mother. Bion spoke about that as the mother with reverie, but one way or another. Uh, furthermore, Winnicott spoke of the period of time, the initial months that the mother and the baby relayed as primary maternal preoccupation, mm -hmm. and he meant that it is a physiological attitude of the mother that allows her to be so attuned to the baby that she intuitively understands. She gets what is going on and what needs to be done. And Winnicott says, in order to do that, the mother doesn't have to be intelligent. She just has to be intuitive, right? I mean, it's not intellectual understanding, it's intuitive understanding. It's the ability to empathize, to identify with the baby, right? Now, envy attacks the ability of the mother to do that. And therefore, if envy is a factor in the personality of the baby, and the ability of the mother, the intuition of the mother to understand the baby, is being attacked, the baby doesn't get the benefit from it because it is stripping off the function in the mother that it needs in order to build up a thinking apparatus. Can it be on the part of the mother? That could be too, but we're talking now of the envy of the psychotic part of the personality. Certainly, if envy is a factor in the mother, it was present at birth already, because okay. for beyond envy is a factor of the person, an innate factor of the personality. <coughs> innate factor of the personality. Right. Yeah. Um, oh, hold on a second. B Bill wanted to say something. No, same thing as she was asking. So. All right. The, the, the envy that you're speaking of is coming from the baby. Mm -hmm. In the baby, not so much in the mother necessarily. No. Uh, well, it could be in the mother and not in the baby, but then we would speak of the psychotic personality of the mother and how it came into okay. existence, right. right? Certainly that can disturb the baby, but the envy of the mother wouldn't create envy in the baby. It would create some other kind of disturbance in the baby, right? But we are talking now of the personality. We say the baby just because what Bion wants to highlight is that envy is an innate factor in the personality. Therefore, it's not the mother that makes the baby to be envious, but rather it's the baby who is born with a quantum of this factor called envy that disturbs its relation to the breast. Mm -hmm. And when Bion means the breast, and we will talk about that in a while, he means really the psychosomatic breast. He doesn't mean the mammary gland. Although the mammary gland is included in that, of course. But when he says psychosomatic breast, he means the function of the breast, not only to feed the baby physically, but also the function of that part of the mother <coughs> to feed the baby emotionally, to feed the baby, to feed love to the baby. Love and through love, understanding. Um, Hold on. Do you want to say something? So, um, it, it sounds so uh, pessimistic in a way. I mean, it almost sounds like if a baby's born with a quantum of envy in the personality, well, can the mother not do anything to overcome that? It, it sounds almost like there's nothing to be done or. Or can there be something that can help the baby overcome that factor? Because otherwise, it feels like the baby is doomed. Yes. Well, <laughs> yes. I understand your question. I'm not saying yes that, that it is necessarily that pessimistic. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so is it this factor, innate factor, an uh, incapacity in the baby's um, self to be soothed because it cannot tolerate the reception, the receiving of the goodness from the mother? Is that what Yes, 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 yes. So it's right. basically an infant who can't, who is in salt, salt, uh, soothable. Is that it? Right, yes. 
So that's what this innate envy is about. Yes. And now, how unsuitable or how hopeless that is, that depends <coughs> on the strength of that innate factor of the personality. Because remember that, what we said last time, um, when we spoke about the death instinct of which envy is an expression, right? Envy is fueled, according to Bion, by, and Klein also, uh, by the death drive, right? Only that while death drive is an abstract, right? It's an abstraction that we call death drive. The expression for the, the one of the ways in which the death drive gets expressed is through this factor called innate envy. And since it is fueled by the drive, it is innate. Now, depending on how strong that factor is, things may look better or worse, more hopeful or less hopeful. In an extreme, this would leave a baby exposed to psychosis. And those clinical pictures that we do see, psychotic children, we do see psychotic children, and not necessarily in psychotic children, the family or the parents um, have produced the psychosis, although that may happen too, but sometimes um, it could happen that a psychotic baby is able to drive the family crazy, and that a mother might be at the end of a rope. Um, if any of you have ever seen, seen and if not, I recommend it, um, a, a very horrifying movie, but terribly interesting, called The Egg of the Serpent. The Egg? Of the Serpent. The Egg of the Serpent. Uh, it's an old movie, perhaps 30 years, or a little less, by Ingmar Bergman, the, Ingmar Bergman, the Swedish movie director. Mm. Uh, and it is about, did you see it, Judy? No, I haven't seen it, but there's a recent movie also that sounds like it's similar. The, we have to listen to, I forgot the name, but I don't want to see it because it's too scary. Well, <laughs> uh, this movie I, is... I don't tolerate those movies well. This movie is hard to tolerate. Probably, yeah. if you see it at home on a TV, it's better. I saw it on the widescreen back in Buenos Aires, and it took me two hours to be able to get home. I just oh. couldn't move. Oh. I had to sit at the table. Me, I didn't want to see it. I <laughs> fortunately met a friend there, and we sat there, hardly being able to talk at the table of a cafe for two hours before we could get up and each one go. go. What, what's the horror in it? The horror in it is that if uh, it is a movie about, but made in the form of a movie, the horrible experiences that Josef Mengele did during Nazism in Germany, how he used Jews or poor people, right, in order to do his horrible experiences, just treating them as if they were guinea pigs, mm -hmm. right, and doing really horrible things. Mm -hmm. Uh, but there you can see uh, the reason why I was reminded of this movie, how a baby in this experience drove a mother crazy. But, so this is just to say that psychotic babies may actually mm. put mothers to the end of the rope and then clinically what one thinks is that the mother produced the psychosis and not that the baby produced the psychosis of the mother, that the mother could cope with other children, but sometimes a baby can be so, so disturbed and disturbing that there is no way that anybody could take care of it. And those babies become then psychotic like children um, or uh, psychotic adolescents, right? Now, this just, and I want to move on, we don't want us to get stuck on this